and welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube for some Gruel Henge. So this deck is again going to be another Cavalier of Thorns deck, um, kind of taking a different approach to Gruel. You know, a lot of people play Gruel and it's just only haste creatures and trying to attack as, as fast as possible. And we have a little bit of that. You know, we still have our Questing Beast Gruel, uh, Gruel Spellbreaker. But what we're going here is just going for a longer game um, built around, you know, ramping with Cavalier of Thorns and getting the Great Henge out there and just being able to outgrind people uh, because of how good the Great Henge is. So that's what we're doing here. So we're, we're uh, trying to ramp into um, these mid-range cards, you know, Incubation Druid, Paradise Druid, uh, and then both Domri's can both add mana as well and trying to get up to Cavalier of Thorns, which gets more lands into play, help us find this uh, Great Henge and go from there. Um, a couple other card choices. Um, of course, Brontodon, it's pretty good these days with all the artifacts and enchantments around. Um, I'm going to try a Sunder Shaman also. I think this card could be kind of underrated. Now, the one the one downfall of Sunder Shaman is specifically Cauldron Familiar, how it can chump block Sunder Shaman really well. Um, but it, if they don't have Cauldron Familiar, you know, this does, you know, they have to, you can only be blocked by one creature. If they don't block it, you get to destroy target, artifact, or enchantment um, that player controls. Um, I like that it's a 5 5 because that means it trades with Cavalier of, um, well, really all the Cavaliers, you know, trades with Cavaliers and Kenruths and stuff like that. Because we're playing this Sunder Shaman here and we want to be able to help it get through, um, I'm playing one Vivian to be able to give it Trample also um, to be able to help it get through. And plus, give the Cavalier of Thorns Trample and everything too. Um, help those get through. So we got a Vivian in here. But then we can also use like Domri Fight, Domri's Ambush, stuff like that to help Sunder Shaman get through too. Um, the other th card that I really like right now is Ravager Worm. I think Ravager Worm's pretty underrated. So we're like, that's the other thing is we're kind of ramping into Ravager Worms, trying to make uh, good use of this card. Um, all of these, all these Jeskai Fires decks, and and basically every deck right now, everybody's playing castles, um, and so this, you know, this can destroy castles, you know, six mana, be a land destruction spell plus a huge creature. I think it's pretty interesting. You know, it could eat like a Kenrith or a Cavalier of Gales or anything like that too, but I like that that we have um, a card that can just eat castles and help slow our opponent down. So I want to give that one a try. And then uh, sideboard, we got a third Ravager Worm uh, and a second sh Sunder Shaman, some more Thrashing Brontodon. So we have some more Artifact and Enchantment Hate and another Ravager Worm. Um, I'm going to have a Kiora for the, the matchups that go longer. Give us a, a three-mana card advantage engine because, you know, we, we start with Kiora, and then all these things draw cards for us. Some more kind of like the Great Henge. But then besides those, you can see we're basically just... Um, having some anti-aggro cards i'm going with flame sweep and bone crusher giant for my anti-aggro we'll see how those those two kind of pair up but that that's what i'm going with here another domri's ambush so how strong that card is and a couple crowl harpooners if we play against gilded goose decks harpooner is just a good anti-gilded goose card yeah so i i'm not going cinder vines I like Cinder Vines a lot, but I'm not going Cinder Vines because I think that the creatures are really valuable. Like, whenever you're playing a card like the Great Henge, you want as many creatures as possible. And plus our Domries, we want as many creatures as possible. So that's why I'm going Brontodons instead of Cinder Vines. <clears throat> Alright, hopefully Incubation Druid stays alive. And we draw land. Okay, we drew land. The one Sunder Shaman in the main deck is the only card that costs um, double red. So we don't have to be too focused on getting a lot of red mana.
Gruel control. Thanks for coming up here, Hawkeye. I need your help. You've been struggling today. I would like to play the Chaos Bringer to be able to make sure we can ramp into Cavalier and Great Hench and stuff, but this is just the best play. Just playing the Questing Beast. Wayward Wanderer, time to resub. Can't stay to watch though, but thank you. Hey, thanks for stopping by for the sub. Way Wayward Wanderer, have a great night. And I'll see you soon. Ah, oh, it's a beautiful day for chaos, isn't it? <laughs> How about it, boys? That's a good one. Nods. Let's just fight. Chomp. Basically did the exact same turn they did. Um... Sambin! Thanks for the Twitch Prime sub. They did not attack. How would it make sense not to attack? Land is exactly what we wanted. I guess it would make sense if I had another questing beast that I could just I could just block and then play another questing beast. <laughs> Whoops. All right, so extra ambush. We got a mirror to start with. Extra ambush. Um, this is probably a pretty good Bone Crusher Giant matchup. Okay. I mean, a 5-5 five, five creature is pretty big for Sunder Shaman.
It's quite better for you. The performance is good. I haven't really noticed too much of a difference myself. But again, I think it's the I don't think it's the um, arena performance that's bad. I think it's just the recording. That's what I feel like it's, is making my computer slow is is recording while streaming and everything. All right, they got a fast hand here on the play. Did you just call me scrawny? We won't answer to other guilds. Three lands, three accelerants. You got some thunder snow going on at your house? What's thunder snow? It's like it's like snowing and thundering. I guess that would be that. Cool performance has been better for you as well. Ooh, okay, okay. That's a good one. Why don't they just play the castle? So if I if I play the Sunder Shaman, they could fight it with the indestructible four four. Well I guess they it's really a five four because of this. So yeah, they just fight it with the wicked wolf. I was gonna say they could fight it with the four four and then also shoot it with Bone Crusher Giant, but Alright, start to do a little ramping. You okay, bud? <laughs> yep, cat stream now. Something smells rotten. Wait, that might be me. Yep, that's you. That's not too scary. Good, not like return to nature or anything like that. Ugh. Couldn't draw land.
Night Pack Ambusher. Alright, we're gonna have to try to kill that thing. Hey, Aggro, yeah, definitely having a good stream. Playing some different decks today. Learning a lot. I like this deck that we're playing here. Um, you'll know the Great Henge is definitely one of my favorite cards. Alright, so they didn't kill the Cavalier. So we have stabilized. The Stomery is obviously going to be an annoyance. So if I block, our creature dies, I get back, maybe get back Ambush. Alright, yeah, let's get back Ambush. It's not bad either. Let's get rid of some of these wolves. Too many wolves over there. Uh, nothing disgusts me more than law and order. Uh. Hinge is your favorite card in, in Eldritch Moon? Or, wow, not Eldritch Moon. Throne of Eldraine. There we go. Throne of Eldraine, yeah, that's that's a great favorite card to have for sure. It's a good one. Okay, well, this could be a lot of damage. Fifteen damage. That's a lot of damage. I've survived an apocalypse. I will survive. You picked the wrong fight. Yeah, I didn't want to attack. I mean, they could, they could double block with Paradise Druid and, um, you know, even with the, the double ambush, they could double block and, and kill my questing beast. And I, I didn't think that was worth it with having the Vivian in hand and everything. And, um, so yeah, I just didn't do that. Pretty sure they're dead.
Can't really imagine they're going to survive this. I don't need to fetch at all. I'm just kind of fetching. I'm going to target the hexproof thing. And then this gives these things trample. So we have 24 trample damage attacking them. They have one toughness to block. Pretty sure that's that's lethal. All right, we won the Gruel Mirror. Just going bigger with the Great Henge. Uh, yeah, just didn't really have. So why no Hydras? Yeah, just didn't really find find room to put Hydras. I guess. Um, that could be a better option in the sideboard than Bone Crusher Giant, I guess. To to fight aggro decks, but I like how Bone Crusher Giant only you get to do the stomp part at turn two. <laughs> yeah, maybe I need to start playing more Gruel. Our last time that we played Gruel, that was the, the Gruel aggro and historic, and we went, we went 5 0. Maybe I'm a Gruel player. Tranquil Cove. That's usually a deck that that likes playing against green creatures. Oh nope, I don't want you. So we'll see how we do. Oh yeah, we went six out with that grill deck. That's right. Hey, cute Samster. Howdy, happy Tuesday. Seems like every line that I take, we just get punished for immediately. Play that, they have veto. If I would play, you know, like Spellbreaker or Paradise Druid, they'd have some kind of sweeper. What can you use instead of Vivian in the deck? Um, basically, any of the any of the cards that are in the deck that you want to play another copy of, you can. Hey, Kudo Samster, getting that gifted sub. Thank you so much, there, Santa QQ. Um, you can play an Embercleave instead of the Vivian. Same kind of thing, like where you want, yeah, like an an, em an Embercleave would be good. It's like something to to uh, have your big creatures do a lot of damage. Could use Collision Colossus. Yep, that'll work. Good news is they they don't have very many cards left. You know they've used a, a lot of cards here. That if we can kind of stabilize with these brazen borrowers, we'll be good. We just gotta survive. Yeah, Tails End was really good in the Oko meta game. I don't I don't like it too much anymore. But that was. Because, you know, it doesn't counter, like, Fires and Cavaliers or Trail of Crumbs, which is of anything like that. 
But that was very good for our opponents, for sure. If I if I could double if I could play Spellbreaker plus Ambush, I would have done that. Um, but I couldn't, so I'm just going with the Questing Beast. Okay, we're going to need more than two lands. Let's get some lands. Okay, let's try this. <laughs> All right, we got lands. It's a good sign. Go, Harpooner, go. So definitely possible I should just minus the Domri to, to fill my hand up first. Thought about just eating their castle, Vandras. Yeah, Domery Ravager Worm. That's underrated right there. <laughs> My muscles may be small, but watch out when I flex them. Ugh, that three life. So Domri's ultimate is that at the beginning of each end step, I make a 4-4. Four, four. Four, four Trampler. Let's 
Get another Ravager Worm in here. That card's awesome. <laughs> what is it? Yeah, the Dragon Wolf, it doesn't do anything special. It's just like the other pets. Uh, yeah, no, no Pioneer content for me. So yeah, just standard and historic. Yeah, and Brawl. Yeah, basically just, you know, all the stuff that's on Arena. So yeah, as, as more and more cards get released on Arena and get closer to Pioneer, they said that's like their ultimate goal is to have Pioneer on Arena. Okay, so we have a, a couple of a couple of mana creatures and a couple and our and our two most expensive cards. So we'll see if we can find something in between. Because the Great Henge is still going to cost seven mana if we just have Paradise Druid. So we're, right now we're just going from two to six. We will have six mana on turn four though. Well, there's something in between. This could let us play, you know, Questing Beast for four mana. If it stays alive, then Great Henge for five mana. Then this for six mana. Obviously, the absolute dream is playing the Great Henge next turn and then playing Paradise, and it resolves, and then we play Paradise Druid. That's the absolute dream. That's only going to happen if they tap out for, like, a Kefnet again. Yeah, I would love my opponent to play a Kefnet. <laughs> he just swats the mouse away. Bap. 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 All right, so no great henge for us here. I guess they're trying to decide which one to exile. Rugged, I like, I would have rather fetched just to get a land out of the deck, but Rugged Highland is just always going to come into play tapped. So we'll just, since we're not going to need that mana here, we'll just use that. Because, yeah, we definitely need to shuffle up, drawing all these lands. Basically, just take a counterspell out of, the, out of their hand. Hope we have a better chance of this thing resolving now. If I don't play anything, then they get to Chemistry's Insight. That's not great for me.
I mean, maybe this is just over committing on, on my part. Maybe I'm just supposed to just attack with Paradise Druids and not even play Spellbreaker or Great Henge. And just play nothing. Because this isn't great if they just untap and time wipe. Well, they're probably not going to be time wiping. There's that counter spell they were holding up. They kept that card on top pretty fast. I just want to resolve the Great Henge, but I just don't think it will resolve. No, I was, I was holding the Druid so that if, if we could play the Great Henge, then I could immediately cast the Druid for two mana and gain two life and, or, well, then, you know, get the, the trigger and everything there. So that's why I was holding the Druid, because it pairs so well with the Great Henge. Okay. Good job, Cavalier of Thorns. Cavalier of Thorns milled over, uh, you know, ramped us one land, but then it milled over three other lands and a mana creature. And then the land it got us was a fetch land. They got another land out of the deck. So we that Cavalier of Thorns got five lands out of my deck and a mana creature with its um, with its ability. All right, Gruul's 2-0. Oh. I mean, if I draw lands, this is awesome. Do we keep a hand that does nothing, though? If we don't draw lands? Basically, if we don't draw lands, we lose. But if we draw lands, you know, we have an awesome curve here. Spellbreaker, Questing Beast. I have I'm on the I'm on the play, so that means I have two draws before turn three. Or like on turn three, so I'll have two draws. So I have to have a land in one of the first two. Um there's twenty five lands in the deck. So we don't have a great chance of drawing. So we only have a, a 43 and a half percent chance of drawing a land the first turn. So 
So we have a, a 68.5% chance of hitting our third land drop here. That's not a great chance. That's 31.5% of the time we just lose. Yep, the Rule of Law deck is on YouTube now. Yep. It did just fine. I... Like, there, there were just a lot of close games that were, like, some different lines that I took ended up costing us. But it, it felt better than one and three, basically. We were, we were in all four matches. They were all real close. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't wasn't really a folio version. Another gruel mirror. The two times we played against gruel. Or both whenever we're playing Gruel. Yeah, we got Viv, so hopefully we can make our Gruel Spellbreaker a lot bigger than theirs, and ours will be too Gruel for school. Hmm. I don't want to just use my mana better and just play both of these things this turn. You think I'm a crazy beast? Where do you see my mates? My wild beasts are bringing your comeuppings. That's fine. Nah. Oh, I am gonna love tearing this place to the ground. This will be fun to watch. Obviously, the worst case scenario is Questing Beast. Yay, no Questing Beast. Ah, well, you're annoying. So basically, I think that was kind of the problem with... That was kind of the problem with just sitting back and playing defense for Vivian. Was Questing Beast. We have a lot of good draws here to finish this off. Basic Force isn't one of them. We got a lot of good ones. Ugh. That hurts. Whoa. Doesn't that attack just leave him dead? That was not a good attack. Doesn't that just leave him dead? We did it! We should not have won that, but we did. Cool. Alright, extra worm, extra ambush. Couple 
bone crushers. All right, let's give this a try. Okay, well, I don't have anything that costs two or three, but we have, um, right now we have Let's see. Pretty close to... I don't know, we have between like 15 to 20 cards that cost two or three. So if we draw it, hopefully one of those 15 to 20 cards in our first three draw steps. Or not. But you know, I liked that we hit our land. I liked that we had like perfect mana, and then we had like some you know great turns later on. All we had to do is fill this curve in, and hope they didn't have a super fast start. Also, unfortunately, they do have a super fast start, and I did not fill in my curve. So just the worst possible scenario: us draw three lands in a row, and them have one drop, one drop spellbreaker. I don't hate the keep though. I don't hate this keep. But that's obviously worst case scenario. Yeah, we got we had a lot of twos and threes we could have drawn. Alright, I feel like I should play all the Bone Crusher Giants, especially on the on the play where Bone Crusher can kill Pelt Collector right away. I guess that means I'd cut Sunder Shaman. But Sunder Shaman's a good body. But I guess we have other creatures that are good bodies too. Means that I I guess I maybe need to keep this because of Embercleave though too. I guess we're taking out Domery. Alright, well now we get to go first. Yeah, my, my version of Gruul isn't really a, isn't one that, like, obviously Once Upon a Time would be good, but with all the different uh, card advantage and late game that this deck can provide. Um, but yeah, it hurts the consistency of the first few turns, for sure. All right, well, the last game we needed spells. We drew all three of our draws were lands. This time we need we need some lands. Draw on spell, spell. Come on, deck. Just switch it up. Draw, like, some lands and some spells. We drew spells before. Now we can draw some lands. Land time. Dang. That really hurts. If we would have just drawn th those three cards last game, that would have been awesome. If we would have drawn the cards we did, you know, we could just switch those. Oh, the first draw was Bone Crusher Giant. Think of our first draw was Bone Crusher Giant last game. Kill the Pell Collector, play it. And our second one was Cavalier Thorns.
Alright, well that's a start. We need another one. No, I don't I don't mind not hitting the druid. I mean that pell collector was gonna be pretty brutal. That Pell Collector was already going to be a 4-4. Four four. We need a land. I'm playing 25 lands, that is. Uh, I guess so. That's mana for next turn. If they have any haste, I'm dead. No haste. Yay. Stabilized. <laughs> yeah, we got a dragon on top of a treasure. We need my opponent to flood out pretty bad. We got very fortunate. They did. I'll just get. I'll just gain the extra life. Get Incubation Druid in play, because of course it's going to get the counter from the Great Henge, so it'll be able to start adding three mana next turn. Yeah, I'll be I'll be really surprised if we lose this now. I mean, they could have, like, Brontodon, um, Embercleave could be a problem. All right, then the deck. All right, GG's. The Henge paying off. Yeah, obviously we, we had a whole lot more mana to play a whole bunch more things that turn, draw a bunch more cards. Like that game was over. All right, we're three and zero. We're back in the numbers. Seems like every time I play the Great Henge deck, I do well. Really like this card. The Great Henge is basically just like the best Planeswalker in the format. If you really think about it, it's the best planeswalker. Hmm. All right, so we already did the math on this. Not a great keep. Yeah, deck tech donations. I just do no. We do them here on stream. I do them basically right after the league. Uh, so yeah, do them right away. And uh, yeah, basically we put the put the deck up here um, and talk about it, and and uh, you know I'll answer any questions about it, but talk about things that I like, don't like, things to improve, that kind of stuff. Well, we, we got the luck last game, so we, we don't get the luck this game, too. 
That's not how it works. You don't get the luck twice in a row. So what are they doing? Ooh, land. What are they doing with Breeding Pool Lovestruck Beast? What's Breeding Pool Lovestruck Beast? We just need one more land to get to Cavalier. If we get to untap with Domri. Oh, what? Can't finish your job. They can only punish you if they catch you. <laughs> So leading with Sunder Shaman means that it's a lot easier to play this, the Great Henge. Instead of leading with Questing Beast, because you know, just get that extra power. <laughs> Where do you think a Lovestruck Beast takes his love? To the Breeding Pool. Ah. Lore checks out. Alright, so it is Teamer Adventures. Land, yeah. It's not like a Fine. It's just a pretty average trade for us either way. It's not it's not bad trade. It's not a great trade. No, alright. That's that was the problem with the trade though. Uh I thought about that. Brazen borrower. Well darn. That was definitely the problem with the trade. Yeah, you definitely have Teamer Flash. This is going to be tough. Just have too much mana compared to us now. I really needed that. Great hench to stay out there. Brazen Borrower was perfect. I think we're going to be bringing in flame sweeps. You eat like a child. Power can go a long way. <laughs> There's still no lands there. Out of those five. Yep. 
Yes, dark side. Yeah, it's giving frames. Yeah, it seems like a, a okay place to play some flame sweeps. Hmm. Still gonna be a pretty tough matchup. Hopefully they don't draw Brazen Barber. And this calls Natural Innkeeper too, though. Maybe I just do this. I don't know. We don't really have, like everything, everything can kind of do stuff. It's not cards I, that I really dislike. No, I'm not going to play that card. Yeah, Clover and F Fertile Footsteps is, is an amazing amount of mana. And so that's why this is tough. I keep on having these two landers. With no mana creature. There we go. Go, Sundra Shaman, go. I guess this is a bad play by playing Questing Beast, isn't it? It's just bad against Brazen Borrower. Obviously, they have Brazen Borrower. So if I, if I don't do that, I could have replayed the Sunder Shaman. That's what I need to do. It's definitely the card I wanted to see the least. Raisin Bar were there.
Playing too fast. Hey, Dr. K. Whoa, it hit him. That clover doesn't look so lucky anymore. I wonder what they got in their hand over there. They're just not doing anything. They got a team or a sweeper? All right, we got that game. <laughs> Teamer sweeper is four clover borrower. Dahmer giving my creatures haste is kind of important with Sunder Shaman. I'll play one Flame Sweep, and even though Flame Sweep's not good with my mana creatures, I'll play one Flame Sweep, one of each Dahmer, just to kind of have those. Ugh. I like four lands. I can't keep it though. All right, well, this is just better. They kept their hand so fast. I couldn't just keep. Don't do anything till Cavalier of Thorns. Well, that's good, no Lucky Clover. There's a bunch of lands over there. I would really I would really like to draw the Great Henge. Let's just get more lands out of the deck. That was a pretty good, pretty good Cavalier though, you know, emptying a bunch of lands. We don't want to draw lands, so that's a good Cavalier. Yeah, the zombie army token is considered a black creature. 
Yeah, so yes, it does work with a Yara. Come on, Great Henge. Bleh. I'll just keep these Bone Crusher Giants over here to just play after we draw this Great Henge next turn. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right, we're out of twelve lands. Sure. There it is. Called it. it had to show up eventually. Now they just use their Fae of Wishes. They don't get to go grab a something that destroys an artifact or enchantment. Great play on waiting on the Bone Crusher Giants. Thirteen lands are gone. I guess we just attack with these things, right? We just trade. Hey, Ozo. It's a close game. Yeah, we'll basically see what they do here. They discard Escape to the Wild and Edgewall Innkeeper. Oh, their hand must be pretty loaded. Their hand must be pretty loaded. Hey, Rackle Guru. Yeah. Yeah, Teamer. Yeah, this this does seem pretty cool. The Teamer Adventures. I kind of feel like my opponent's going to play...
Come on, bunch of lands. Alright, well that's not the worst. Those weren't great cards to draw anyway. Yeah, I felt like they are going to be playing Brazen Borrower. It's definitely what it felt like. That's fine. I want to get creatures in play before they, they like bounce the Great Henge. We do have three the Great Henges. We've only seen one so far. Uh, that hurts. It's more mana. They obviously they just need mana because they have you know ten cards to play over here. Gruel Smash. That was not a very good Cavalier. Said so the other one was good, this one was not very good. Milled over Vivian and a Great Henge. They already had a lot of cards to play. I went with Return to Nature. I just, they're just dead. Gotta play more cards. All right, four and oh. Yeah, dragon's new today. Yep, yep, we're gonna yeah, we're gonna play Abzan Doom. You're excited for it? Yeah, we'll have we'll have to stop here to have enough time. But man, I liked this Gruel Henge deck. I liked this deck a lot. Yeah, nice 4-0. The Great Henge is just awesome. This card's so good. Cavalier Thorn still underrated. Yeah, I like this deck a lot. I I wish I had like um I kind of wish like maybe maybe we need like one more two mana card. I wish I could just like fit in like four growth chamber guardians in here also because of how good that card is with with the great henge and everything and that would like help out the curve, but I just can't really fit it in with, you know, wanting to play Brontodons and Sunder Shamans and things like that. Sunder Shaman was pretty good. Bronzedon was very good too. Both these cards were very good. Lots of artifacts and enchantments around. Um, you know, Spellbreaker, Questing Beast did their thing. Vivian did its thing. Domri was pretty cool. Like this, this Domri plus Ravager Worm. Awesome. This deck's, just, this deck's sweet. This deck's sweet. Uh, yeah. So yeah, we're like. <clears throat> a lot of other people just play Gruul of just only wanting to attack and just only playing haste creatures and trying to attack and, and they don't have like a good late game. People disrupt them at all like, or if their draw isn't very good, it's they're not going to be winning. This is much more of a, um, a Gruul deck that can still obviously attack very well. Like our creatures are huge. We can still attack very well. But we can play a, a really good late game. You know, we get to play more mana creatures and uh, more ramp cards with the Domries and really focus on late game because of Great Henge. Um, and Cavalier of Thorns, of course, just ramps you and everything. And uh, it's just a really good quality card.
Yes, yeah, this was an awesome Cavalier of Thorns shell. Um, yeah. Yeah, we're definitely going to play some more Gruel Henge in our future for sure. Um, but there we go. So that's Gruel Henge. This was awesome. We finally... It's, it took a couple of days for us to find a deck that we did well with. Uh, we finally did. All right, so Gruel Henge looking good. All right, if you're watching this one later on on YouTube, you want to do hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. And of course, leave some comments. If you're trying out Gruel Henge yourself, let me know how it's going for you, what you think of the cards and, and everything. Um, yeah. Uh, anything in the sideboard that you think we need to change? Uh, you know, maybe we need to change something with the Crowl Harpooners, anything like that. Um, yeah, let me know if there's anything we need to do differently. Um, so why not just one Ember Cleave? I could play an Ember Cleave. It's I basically play I'm playing Vivian instead of Ember Cleave. But yeah, if if you want an Ember Cleave, you could replace Vivian with Ember Cleave. Like if if you're somebody who's playing like the old Gruel and you have Ember Cleave in your account and you don't have Vivian in your account, you could play that too. Um, basically, I'm just doing this instead. But yeah, as a, like a way to give like these things, these big creatures trample and everything. Yeah, I wouldn't mind an Ember Cleave instead of Vivian. It could be better. Um. All right, but yep, that's Gruel Henge. Uh, so yeah, so thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.